What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Mental Health Mondays. I know you missed us. I know you love us. You wanted to see more of us. And we are back with another episode with our homie, Broke Ass Knives, a.k.a. Cole, down here. And uh, we've got a great conversation, great topic for you guys today. But before we get into it, just want to do the usual reminder that we always do that me and and this guy we're not medical professionals we're just regular joes from the community that are trying to share our stories and your stories with the hope of helping one another and uh, if you guys are experiencing any problems you have any genuine concerns please dial 988 or seek immediate medical help you know uh, your health, your safety, your security is of, of absolute importance. Please, everybody, be well. Remember, you are loved. And if you need anything, go go seek help. Go seek help. So, this side, yes. Maddie, how you doing today? Cole, how you doing today? <laughs> I'm good. I've had a very excellent day today. Yeah. Yeah, not bad here. Still waking up, so That's I'm a little nice. tired, but I'll, I'll deal. <laughs> I just want to start off the bat. Cole was our very first guest, and for him to be here, camera on, at his face, uh, I got to give him that, because claps. Yes, he's a lot like me, very anxious. We chatted for a good while before recording, but he's here, he's doing it. Proud of you, Cole. Big love, big love for Cole. <laughs> I don't know if I can make me you. blush. Even for you. <laughs> I'm just but, throwing up gang signs. So. <laughs> I don't. Mine's broken. There you but go. <laughs> we're joking now, but today's topic is actually quite heavy. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you saw his under his name uh alcoholic so we're going to be talking about alcoholism and uh cole's journey uh i haven't heard this story yet i'm very excited but i myself don't drink but i've been on the other end of it my mm -hmm. uh one of my my dad was a heavy heavy drinker Oof. caused him to miss like everything of my life so, I mean, it's a thing that affects a lot of people, not just the person involved. And so I can't wait to hear uh, what Cole has to say and his success story. So, Cole, the floor is yours. Okay. Um, well, last time I was on here, I talked about, you know, my anxiety and depression and how that kind of pretty much led up to uh, my alcoholism. I mean, that's partially, uh, you know, genetic because it runs in my family. But having those uh, other factors didn't didn't really help me avoid it much. Um, so I guess today I'll talk more about uh, coming through the other side of it. Um, basically when it all came to a head was when I went to the hospital and I was basically told, Hey, you're going to die probably within the year if you don't stop drinking. Oof. So, uh, I mean, at that point, you know, with my anxiety, I already thought I was dying. So uh that just felt like confirmation but it really solidified everything and you know the i don't even i i still don't even know if i could have done it if it wasn't for some of the 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 treatment that i got while i was there mm -hmm. and this is something pretty much anyone can get if they if they need it but they have medication that 
helps a lot with the detox. Mm. Um, it also helps. Well, it it helps a lot with the anxiety from detox too. Yeah, because you know, um, while alcohol does help with anxiety while you're drinking it, the next day it makes it a lot worse mm -hmm. and detoxing is even worse than that um you pretty much go into panic attacks constantly for you know the vast majority of the worst parts of it um but the medication they gave they they gave me helped a lot uh but the main reason for the medication is so you don't uh and you don't go into like cardiac arrest from it um, mm -hmm. or whatever other issues um, i'm not the most medically knowledgeable but um that that was one of the i think biggest factors was getting that initial help because if I wouldn't have done that, I it would have been pretty impossible on my own. I just didn't have the uh, mental capacity and fortitude to do it. Um, but it's something available. So mm -hmm. people people need to know about that a little bit more. Because yeah. a lot of times people try and attempt this on their own, and if they've, you know been a been a heavy drinker for a long time like you can actually uh have have medical issues from coming off of it i didn't um, even realize that to, like a heart attack was on the table on the detox like that's yeah. crazy i have no idea. this is new to me so yeah. Mo most people probably aren't to that to that level but i mean even still when you're when you're detoxing from it, it 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 starts to feel almost impossible mm. without without that help so it's it's a lot like uh you know people uh getting off of heroin and needing methadone or something mm. it's not a uh, it's not uncommon or anything. Wow. It's just not very well known. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people think, you know, you just need to stop drinking, but it doesn't always work that way. Um, but after the couple of weeks I spent in the hospital, um, and this wasn't entirely for the detoxing, this was because of other issues that my alcoholism caused. Um, so I was in there a bit longer than, than, uh, than, well, a lot longer than if I was just going to detox. But, um, after I eventually got out, um, and I was no longer being given the, uh, that medication, the, it, it definitely did become more of a struggle again mm. but it wasn't it wasn't to the same level and it did it did help a lot that at the time i had to uh stay with family because i couldn't walk uh very well um, i had to use a walker for about a year and my place at the time was upstairs so i couldn't Oh, yeah. I couldn't uh I couldn't live there anymore. So um it did help that I was staying with family and I had a lot of uh, help and support at the time. Um but I tell you what, the first that I'd say about two years you kind of feel a bit like an exposed nerve the whole time mm. um like it before i quit it had been a long time since i had been uh really short tempered like i used to be when i was young but that's because i was a young angry kid but 
um when, when i stop drinking like just everything just wears on your nerves like you wake up and you just feel that underlying tension and stress and anger and just everything rubs you the wrong way and you can't let stuff go and your mind just kind of focuses and spirals and it mm -hmm. it it took a long time before i started finding ways to cope with that and um part of it, it is you know your uh your your mental chemical balances trying to even themselves out and it yeah. takes a while before you start getting steady again but um another part of it is just that when you're a, a heavy alcoholic like that you tend to drink to solve everything mm -hmm. so you don't really have the the knowledge the 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 ability to regulate yourself like everyone else like other people you know if something is going to bother them they have ways that they've developed to deal with that so they don't snap at people or you know but my my coping mechanism for that was gone mm -hmm. so it was it was it was uh, it was a rough period but um after a while you start to start to develop those mechanisms mm -hmm. and it's kind of forced because like i said you're still balancing out so you have to develop them a little quicker and then you know with a little more uh urgency otherwise you know you're yeah just screaming and throwing stuff or something <laughs> um but that kind of led me into uh the cognitive behavioral therapy i was just talking about that earlier today cbt it really is a, an amazing system for a lot of different stuff it, it is something i use for my anxiety depression mm. as well as you know stuff like this it's it's a it's a way of changing your mindset mm -hmm. um and you know if you if you train your your mind to work on a more positive note you just have an overall better outlook mm -hmm. and i mean it's not like an overnight thing and i'm not saying that you know i'm an extremely positive person now because i'm not i'm still a cynical prick and i <laughs> i'm angry a lot but you know i'm a lot better than i was and so doing something like this i wouldn't have been able to do before mm -hmm. because you know with along with the anxiety and depression and all of that and then with alcoholism the shame and the all mm -hmm. that the the amount of negative thoughts you know that that you constantly think about yourself wouldn't have allowed me to do something like this yeah and you know those are still there but they're not as bad and and it's not as frequent and maybe muted a bit mm -hmm. so that i i definitely recommend the the cbt for anyone that wants to try something that's not uh you know not medication based or isn't ready to go to therapy or something like that because you can you can buy cbt workbooks on amazon yeah and yeah. just reading through them and working through the exercises it it's 
it's helpful and it gives you something to focus on if you're spinning out too so um so that was pretty much the first two years is readjusting um right now i'm all, I'm, I'm still fairly new into this it's been about three and a half years um, but I have made it a pretty significant uh, focus of my life, mm -hmm. which has been helping me, you know, stick stick to it. Like, it's not nearly as bad anymore. I don't have constant cravings anymore. Mm -hmm. I still have dreams about it, or certain things will trigger a, a craving. Or, sure. Like... <laughs> Last last night I went to Circle K, and when I was driving home, I realized it was almost 2 a.m. And that made me start to panic before I realized what I was panicking about. It was because I didn't pick up any alcohol, and they were about to stop selling it, so there would be no no chance to buy any before morning. Yeah, and that's something I used to panic about a lot before. Mm -hmm. And it took me a, a moment to realize why I started to spin out. <laughs> but um, once I realized it, I'm like, oh, wait, that's not really an issue anymore. So, um, wow. But, yeah, I, but I made it a pretty big, pretty big part of, uh, pretty big focal point in my life. Like, um I try and talk about it as much as I can. Mm -hmm. um, and as selfish as it is, it's mostly for myself because it helps me to talk about it. But I also like to talk about it in case other people are going through it because I know it, it when I, when I finally uh, started going to AA, it was probably like, I think a year after or mm -hmm. a year and a half after I was, I, I stopped drinking. Um, it, I, it didn't occur to me how much it would help to listen to other people that have had similar mm -hmm. experiences. Like, because I figured I already knew, I already know, I already know other people have this, but just hearing people talk about it and in the kind of, that kind of setting where it is normalized and there's pretty much, aside from maybe brand new people that aren't used to it, there's mm -hmm. no one that, that's showing any kind of, you know, serious, like, uh, shame about who who they used to be mm -hmm. because the it's something they're they're working through and getting and trying to be more positive or you know trying to be better going forward yeah like it it definitely helps to change the way you you see the whole experience because mm. And it, it makes you feel less alone, too, because yeah. it's something that, you know, because it's somewhat uh, self-inflicted, there's a lot of shame and guilt that you feel. Mm -hmm. Because, like, even if it, even if you, it hasn't horribly affected someone else, like me... I was mostly because of the alcoholism and the anxiety and the depression all at once. I was basically a shut in by the time I stopped drinking. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't like drinking and driving. I didn't have some of the same regrets that some of the other people did, but there's still a lot of shame and guilt that you feel anyway. Mm -hmm. Like, because it's 
some of it's uh stigma that you internalize some of it's just regret like deep regret like if i hadn't have been like this things could have been but that's just a mindset that you have to get out of mm-hmm. um and that uh, the the group talks definitely help with that a lot sorry i i, I forget what point i was trying to make i was rambling a bit there for a apologize while. yeah don't um, apologize. you've made a few good points already like keep going <laughs> um well i i guess uh since i i completely um completely lost at what my point was i'll uh i'll talk about what we were talking about earlier and the from a outside perspective listening to people talk about this kind of things in the meetings mm-hmm. um not having the same experiences uh but having the same uh like root cause um there is kind of a you have you have some kind of um, uh, connection to it mm-hmm. while being while having the the different outcomes and listening to the stories and listening to how some of them are are really bad like the people that talk about just absolute awful stuff that they they've done mm-hmm. and uh it's a lot of times the kind of stuff that if you were around this if you had experienced this or if you had heard of this happening in a different context you would probably just immediately hate this person mm-hmm. but knowing what the cause is and seeing the work they've done to change and the stuff that they've done to try and make up for it and seeing um like sometimes this is 10 20 years after they're getting sober that you're hearing about this mm-hmm. and it really it really gives you a different perspective on it i wouldn't say i'm not going to say anything like redemption or anything like that mm-hmm. there's nothing so cut and dry it's just people trying to live with stuff that they've done because of this thing that they had mm-hmm. like alcoholism yes self-inflicted but it is something that is outside of your control it's a disease you know at the end of the day and that doesn't make up for everything it really doesn't but it's not something you can ignore and it's definitely something that you kind of change your opinion on every time you hear a story Mm -hmm. Um, but it puts a lot of stuff into perspective if you uh, if you are someone that has done something that you think is totally uh, just egregious i mean hearing some of these other stories might give you hope that you can be a better person you know Mm -hmm. um all in all taking such a a, such negative uh experiences and turning them into something positive is pretty incredible for me seeing that anyway Mm -hmm. um but yeah so oh i remember now uh yeah so i 
pretty much made this a big part of who I am now. Like, I'll, I'll talk about it pretty much at any point. If anyone wants to ask me about it, or I'll just randomly tell people, oh, yeah, no, I'm an alcoholic. Mm. Like, I don't mind saying that anymore. I think it, I, I view it more as a healthy thing now mm -hmm. to be open about that. Um, I display my sobriety coins on my shelf. I have a tattoo right here with my sobriety date. Nice. Um, like, I've definitely made it a big part of who I am now. Um, uh, so, yeah. Right now, I'm at about the three and a half year mark into my sobriety um and i can't say that i'm feeling better than ever because i have you know other issues that i cause through my alcoholism with my uh neuropathy and everything but i'm definitely more clear-headed and probably more positive on myself than I've been since I was a kid, you know? That's good. Yeah. All in all, I think mental health wise, it's a, been a major plus. That's um, awesome. I'm not, I'm not running from myself anymore, mm. which is, you know, something I was constantly doing, trying to shut my, my head down. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's pretty much the uh, course of events. Um, I'm glossing over a lot of it because most of it's quite boring. <laughs> but um, do you guys have any questions? I have two. Uh, one is. Can you give us an example of what you do for the CBT? Oh, yeah. And then the second, I think you brought up some good points about, like, you were a shut-in. You liked being alone. Mm -hmm. But you need people around you to help you. Like, I think a lot of times in these situations, people feel alone, so they try to deal with it alone. But you can't. Mm -hmm. You need somebody to help you through it and yours was you know at the time strangers people in these meetings and i think i think that uh like for for me i'm addicted to stuff like food and monster and i like i try to hit this stuff on myself but it's hard i i think no matter what you're going through especially alcohol you need people around you so go find those people. And then how you said there's medication to help you through the initial part. That's something people should know because people quit at that moment. It gets too hard. Yeah. I was that gonna... to be See, one of my, one of my biggest, one of my biggest problems was that I never sought help. And it wasn't until I drank myself into such a state that I was you know, basically dying and had to go to the hospital. And then after that, you know, of course, my family got involved and then I, I had help, but I never sought it. If I had sought it earlier, I'd be in a much better state. Um, and I know, know for a fact that if I didn't have that support, I just would have continued. I would have mm -hmm. said, you know, there's no getting past this. I'll just drink until it's over. I think that's and where a lot of people are at. It's not fair because, like, Methadone has such a good PR firm. <laughs> like, everybody has heard of it. Everybody knows about it, you know? But people may not realize that there are tools and there are medications available and treatment plans to help people with alcoholism. Yeah, mm -hmm. I knew about rehab and AA, but this whole other thing that 
cold. Yeah. Air? I had no idea. Mm -hmm. This should be I'd... blasted all over the place. Yeah. I, I wasn't even I wasn't <laughs> aware of it myself. It was um like I knew because I looked it up before, I knew detoxing could be dangerous. Mm -hmm. But I didn't realize that they had like I, I knew like a hospital could keep you alive through detox. But I didn't know that they had something that would actually help you through the process like that. Yeah. Um, like the one of the. It's it's sounds kind of insane, but one of the things that I I, I really fear is anxiety and panic. So I fear fear a lot, um, and you know the thought of how long I would be having panic attacks through detox was something that always stopped me. No, that's um, a legit. And I didn't realize that there was something that could help so much with that. Yeah. No, that's a legit concern because think about it. It, it becomes a, a concern for quality of life, right? Like it's, you don't want to be sitting there perpetually feeling terrified and having and be, for the people who haven't experienced that like high level of panic and anxiety it's like you perpetually feel like you're dying like the next thing is fucking horrible you know like it, it's not like just oh i don't want to take this test or oh i'm nervous about this it's it's a full body experience of just abject terror you know so feeling that kind of thing perpetually for a long period of time is you don't want it you don't want that i can understand being concerned and about dealing with that for a prolonged period of time you know nobody likes to be uncomfortable yeah so, back, back to your question um with the cbt uh, one of my favorite things that I've found to be the most helpful is really simple. And you can do it. You're meant to do it all the time. Like, it's it's just mental. Like, you're, you just have to pay attention. And when you, when you notice yourself being negative towards yourself, like, like say you go out and you're thinking oh these people are staring at me they think i'm a fat piece of shit um because you know your brain's going to constantly tell you horrible things about yourself you you just stop yourself from thinking that and redirect your mind to something positive or something even neutral mm -hmm. and it's not natural. It doesn't feel right because that's not how you think. But if you interrupt yourself and redirect your mind like that, um, every time you can, like it starts to become a pattern and a habit mm -hmm. and you can retrain your brain to some extent to be less negative about yourself. Um, and I was extremely skeptical about that when I started it, but I had nothing else to do. I was, you know, barely mobile at the time and in a very, very negative state myself. Um, so I figured there, there wasn't any point in not trying it. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it, it's definitely one of the more one of the one of the easiest things that you can do that will have a noticeable positive impact. Oh yeah, absolutely. So here's a question, and you don't have to answer it if it's too personal. But like, if you're feeling those thoughts, what is like something you think about to get you out of that? And you don't have to answer it, but it maybe uh, it gives somebody an idea of like 
what to think well one of the one of the first things i did um because <clears throat> i'm i'm really not good at thinking overly positive like that so initially i i went for neutral because it was something i could pull off like when i started thinking like that especially like in a public setting like that like oh my god there's all these people they're like i just i would stop myself and say you're being a fucking narcissist none of these people give a shit that you're here like no one's staring at you none of them are talking about you you could you know trip and fall and they'd say oh that was funny and that would be the end of it like mm -hmm. No one gives a shit <laughs> like that, and that that kind of helped. <laughs> that would work, you for know. Everything. Yeah, kind of thinking that. Yeah, I mean, because that's something I could get behind because it wasn't overly positive. I didn't feel like I was trying to inflate my own ego because that was something I would balk against. You know, mm -hmm. I wouldn't. My mind couldn't accept that. So something like that. I could accept because it was still like I was still calling myself a narcissist. Uh, but like, like what you think these people give a shit that you're here? Like, none of them give a shit. Like, you're walking around, you see all these other people. Have you thought one thing about them aside from that they're looking at you? No. Yep. This, this so, is a powerful tool. So I would do that pretty much every time I went out in public. Mm -hmm. Especially because you know, at the time I was I was still pretty embarrassed to be walking around in a walker. Mm -hmm. Um you know being fairly young walking around with my walker and you know, knowing that I did it to myself and all these things, it was, I, I was not in a positive headspace, but that, that helped. That, that, that helped me actually start getting out and, you know, going to the store now and again. No, I appreciate that. I appreciate that because, like, that is that's hard for the anxious mind to process and to put it into that like neutral headspace that's that's great actually i'm actually gonna steal that when i have to be around crowds mm -hmm. that is perfect but i have another question we heard about yeah. past coal current coal where do you see coal three years from now um, honestly, I'm, I'm still, still working on that. I still have a hard time imagining myself being alive in 10 years, you know? I mean, I can picture it. Me and you playing the PS5 in 10 years. <laughs> I already have a PS5. The I mean PS6. Six, right. Whatever. Whatever. Um, the PS20. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I forgot which P PlayStation we're on. But anyway, I could picture it, but Yeah. What? But that that's my anxiety. You know, I've thought I was dying since I was like what, fifteen? <clears throat> um so you know, that's something I'm working on. I've been giving myself goals. Um now that I'm, you know, disabled and not in my old career. I've been trying to give myself, you know, new things to do. You're I started new doing the yeah. knife design stuff. That's yeah, giving me something to focus on and work towards. Um, but yeah, I'm still working on the whole what I want for the future. But um, I'm pretty, pretty happy with being at least uh acceptant of the present that's is that neutral yeah. thinking right there no well i for one 
am glad you're here. This, you have a, a story. Like, and you brought up a lot of good points that I hadn't considered. Yeah. For those of you guys also who don't know, uh, Cole is immensely funny. Oh, he's, yeah. a, he's a very good friend. Incredibly witty. You know, so I, I second what Maddie was saying. I'm very glad you're here, man. Like, I can easily see in three years us on whatever FaceTime virtual server thing that the technology develops, still talking smack to one another, you know? Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> He's got 15 knife designs under his belt. Exactly. Three Nobel <laughs> Peace Prizes. Sharif's working for Benchmade. <laughs> <laughs> So that's what we're talking about right there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Cole, I am very proud of where you've come from and where Seriously. you're going. Mm -hmm. well, thank you. Um, I, like I said, I, I grew up on the other side of it. My my family was uh, drunk. And no matter what you said, it wasn't going to help them. But maybe hearing like this this kind of thing will push people who are struggling like just to even get started yeah like there's a lot of good advice to get started and keep going just in this 40 minutes so far i i i think it's fantastic that you mm -hmm. came on and i think i think this is what a lot of people need to hear right here well i mean I'm definitely no expert, but if anyone needs to talk about this kind of stuff, I'm always willing to listen. This is yeah. kind of, I guess, uh, one of the biggest things in my life. So I'm always willing to talk about it. I mean, we can have you on more often to keep sharing, keep talking about it. We'll have you on a live. Just whatever Maybe. you want to do. I want to spread this uh, this message you got. Yeah. Especially the beginning stages where people tend to quit because it gets really hard. That's important stuff to know right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, both mm -hmm. of us, again, the, the, the treatment options, the medication options, that's news to us, you know? And, like, I'm 100% sure that there's somebody out there who's watching this at least one who was like, oh, I didn't even know that existed. Yeah. You know? And that information in and of itself, to know that you can not only get, you know, psychological support, you know, but you could actually get like medical support uh, could be a game changer for them, you know? It's the only reason I'm still here. Yeah. And I know there's a stigma about medication still but there's nothing wrong with taking it and getting help with it especially if it's going to save your life yeah i mean yeah. if Cole had not done it he'd have a sad family we never would have met you mm -hmm. there'd be this uh hole that we never knew would have been filled yeah but now we have coal and we want to keep coal Exactly. You want to cuddle, Cole. Even Getting a little possessive there, Maddie. <laughs> In my pocket. I, I want to. I mean, <laughs> size difference wise, I might fit. You're a giant. <laughs> you guys, Cole has put out the uh, the call for help. If you want someone to talk to. I will put his Instagram down there or whatever you want me to put down there for them to reach you. Sure. Uh, he will guide you. Uh, I mean, you've heard it just in these 40 minutes. Like, and, like uh, I said, I'll, I'll, I'll talk. That's all I can do. I'm not a, I'm not an expert, but nope. it's, it's something I've been through. If someone yeah. needs to vent, if someone wants to ask about certain aspects of programs, I've tried I've, I've been involved in three different programs. Um, one, uh, AA, um, one that's specifically for, uh, 
dual diagnosis of mental health and addiction mm -hmm. and the uh i and so uh, i've tried a couple of the uh the non-religious uh uh programs as well so like i can give my thoughts on all of that if if people just have questions or just want to talk about it sometimes that's all people need is just to talk yeah. to someone that's been through it mm -hmm. that's that's what i needed most of the time yeah. it was just to 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 explain it and be understood you know have someone that's been there that's felt that before you know validate that that feeling and, and I think that's also a good lesson for those of us who may have people who are, are contending with addiction in our own personal lives. Like, there, there often is a underlying reason, an underlying suffering, you know. And if you could just show those people in your life that you have an open mind, you're willing to listen, you're willing to, you know, kind of have a, a judgment free conversation with them, you know, uh, that could go a long ways in your relationship and, and helping the person get to a place where they need to be healthy, you know, uh, uh, shame and embarrassment is probably one of the biggest reasons people don't get don't ask for help. Yeah, yeah. That, that's one of the takeaways for me from what you shared was like, I was really surprised at the amount of like shame and embarrassment. And I thought, wow, like if we could just bridge that gap, you know, um, that could help a lot of people in and of itself, you know, so just, just the takeaway for, for me, you know, like judgment-free conversations they, they don't cost you anything you know oh. but letting a person know that you're there to listen there to to lend an ear you know um yeah it could go a long way just my thought no, i agree and there's no shame in asking for help or reaching out no and i don't think people can do this alone so find someone to help you it, it's so funny the the whole concept of of asking for help right like for if you're not mechanically inclined right you you wouldn't try taking apart your engine or repairing your car without asking for help right or you know if you you don't know plumbing you would have no problem calling a plumber and asking for that you know or yeah. electrical wiring whatever but when it comes to our mental health, <laughs> no, no, no. That's something we're supposed to figure out completely on our own. You know, like it's, yeah. it's strange. It's very strange. The most important part of our entire body and we treat it like it's not there. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. It's time to break down those barriers and change things. Yeah. And well, at least the stigmas are changing a lot. They Thanks. used to be they used to be a lot stronger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they are, no, they're I, still there, but they are coming down. Dude, I even remember like in in and I'm I'm not that old, but I still remember like being a little kid, you know, in like the the eighties. And if somebody had mental health issues, it wasn't talked about, you know, or if they needed to go somewhere for treatment, they'd say like, oh, they're taking a little trip. Yeah. It, it wasn't like, oh, they're, they're, you know, they've checked into a facility or something like that, you know, it wasn't openly spoken about, you know, at least now with, with the younger generation, they're way more comfortable talking about it, which I think is is helping the rest of us you know yeah but 
Yeah. Be like, oh, oh, they're special. <laughs> they, 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 you know, you know, they, she, she's gonna go and get some, get some help. <laughs> that, that's, all, that's all that people would say. They used to cart people off, and you'd never see them again. That's true too. Yeah, I mean, back in the old days. Mm-hmm. Now we we're starting to understand what what's going on, and able to tackle these things head on, yeah. just like Cole did. It's amazing. Well, I, I said it before. I'll say it again. I'm proud of you, man. Ditto. Oh, thank um, you. Where you're going? Yeah. I was dragged kicking and screaming, but I got there. But you owned it for it. Yeah, and, and you see, owned it. Yes. That that's the important thing to me, right? It doesn't matter like how you got there, but the fact that you took ownership of it, you know, and you said, you know, like this is important to me, like. It's something that I talk about with a lot of people, and I haven't breached it here, but it, it's people's sense of need for survival, right? You owned your own survival. <laughs> you, you owned your your future existence. You took control of that. And like, it's, it's a lot of people who don't do that that surprise me, you know? Like, yeah. Um, yeah, dude. Golf claps. Golf claps. <laughs> well, cool. I think we're uh, winding this down. Do you have any closing thoughts or anything? And you don't have Not to. Not especially. Have it, but... Yeah, it's fine if you don't. I I thank you for coming on. This has been an yeah, like eye-opening, excellent uh, episode, I guess whatever you want to call this show episode i don't know whatever but this this has been uh i think a lot of people are gonna look at this and i'm hoping a lot of people will immediately be like cole let's chat yeah dude i I, i'll reiterate something just really proud of you for doing the work thank you for doing the work because now I have you in my life <laughs> and that, that, that is genuinely something that I, I value, you know? So yeah. our little um, discord chats are some of my favorite moments. Quite literally. They, they've been like highlights of my last year, you know? So, um, yeah. Thank you, dude. Keep up the good work. Keep up the damn good work. Oh, I'm doing it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm blushing. <laughs> I don't know. However, ditto for what he did. <laughs> All right, Sharif, you want to wind us out? Yes, absolutely. Thank you again, everybody, for tuning in to another awesome Mental Health Mondays. We hope that you found the messages and the conversation today valuable to every single one of you. I feel like no matter where you are, what you're dealing with, there was something to be taken away from today's conversation. So we hope it was of value to you, you know? Remember, please, again, we are not medical professionals. We are just regular Joes from the community sharing our stories. And uh, really, if you guys are struggling, if you need some help, reach out to somebody if you feel it's a little bit more serious, dial 988 or seek immediate mental or, or seek immediate medical help. Uh, there are resources out there for you. So please use them. Please be well. Please remember that you're loved. And we will catch you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>